it goes. Good afternoon, everybody, or good day, whatever time of day it happens to be. Happy Friday. That's the important part. It's Friday. We all made it. If you're here, you made it too. So that's awesome. We're just going to give a couple more minutes, let some more people get signed in here, and uh, we will get rolling. Hello, Marconi. Welcome back, Emmanuel. We are starting soon. Jello Charles. And a cool today, we are going to model a spinning wheel. So, some people may not even know what a spinning wheel is, but we'll talk about that soon too. Thank you, Ahmad. Welcome back. Nerys, whales. Ooh, very wet whales. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I mean, the city's wet. wet. Normal whales should stay wet, but the city, that's, that's a drag. We're here in a very... Uh, very dry Colorado. A little bit of snow, but that's going away too. Actually, it might be gone by now. I'm not sure. Hello, Will. Hello. Coming in from Australia. That's awesome. Once again, we got, a, we got international coverage. Very cool. We're, uh, we had to flip the room, do a quick reset here. Uh, you guys caught it yesterday. We did a little bit of a shootout. Josh and I did some Halloween modeling in our costumes. It was a it was a good time. I don't know that it was educational, but it was entertaining, if nothing else. So uh, we are streaming from Boulder, Colorado. Here I didn't I didn't actually say that. I just said we were here, <laughs> and you can't see. I guess we're you know we're in a windowless room, but we're Boulder's headquarters in. Uh, Boulder, Colorado, so having a good time. We're going to do a spinning wheel in just a little bit, Abdullah. Uh, fam civil engineer from India, Francesco from Italy. Hey, guys, just one more minute here, and we will get this thing rolling. So, so excited to have so many people here already. This is great. Makes me think back to the first time we did this. I think... Uh, we had a solid two dozen people on there. <laughs> These where we peaked. <laughs> that was that was fun. Good times. This is gonna be this is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna we're gonna learn some things. We'll start with what a spinning wheel is. It's gonna be good. Um. Yes, I, I do know where Wales is. I was, I was making a joke about the, the animal called Wales as well. So. <laughs> All right, with that, we will uh, we'll get this thing started. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to Friday. Welcome to Friday afternoon here. It's afternoon. I know you guys, you guys are all over the globe, so it's, it's a different time there. Um, it's a different time all over the place. So uh, <laughs> we'll just say, hey, hey. Uh, so I'm Aaron. Uh, I'm going to model some stuff for you today. Uh, today, backing up on the other side of my monitor over here is Eric. Eric's back for more. So say, hey, Eric. Hello, everyone. It's glad to be here. Eric was with us when we did uh, the Great Hall from the Harry Potter movies. So. Apparently, he enjoyed it enough to come back again. So that's awesome. You guys demanded Eric, and we brought him back. That's really what happened. So we, we heard the request. Uh, hey, Dave, how's it going? Colin, welcome back, guys. Um, so yeah, so we are going to just kind of jump in and start modeling this thing. But I did want to do, I like to do those, uh, I like to do a quick shout out before we really get rolling. I just want to point out a couple things. Um, I just had to, I had to call this out. Uh, on our forum, we have a sage who goes by the name Box, who's in Australia. He, he's joined us maybe once or twice, um, but it is like literally 12 hours. It's literally, he's on the opposite side of the earth from where we are right now, like almost exactly. Uh, so he has, doesn't get to join live streams very often, but I just wanted to point out his stuff. Because he, he's been putting a couple models up uh, in the gallery on our forum. If you don't go to our forum, of course, 
Go check out our forum, forums.sketchup.com. And check out, he has a stream called Out of the Box, which is a little pun play on his name. But he's been posting these models where uh, he explains how he makes them, and they're really pretty simple. It's like a connection of simple components that he just kind of chains together, and then use extensions like TrueBend to just go in and distort them and make shapes out of really fairly simple shapes. It's, it's, it's just really cool. So he's got a good form, but he's, he's got tons of images in there. I think there's over 200 uh, entries in that topic alone in his gallery section. So um, yeah, check that out. Box does awesome stuff. Um, he's a great artist and he's also very helpful, Sage. Um, so yeah, just wanted to, wanted to give a shout out to that real quick. Also, while we're here in the forum, I did make a topic. So I called it Spinning Wheel Livestream. Just trying not to be too, you know, crafty with that name. <laughs> I kept it simple. But if you guys want to uh, share a file, if anybody comes across, hey, this is a good file, you know, good image, something like that that I could use, that's cool. There's also links in there for the uh, actual file, reference files I'll be working off of, as well as a link to the website where I found uh, those plans. Before we dive into those plans though, I just, be, just because, just for fun, I'd have to uh, call this out because this is something I've been working on for months now. And I just today at lunchtime finished the Lego Millennium Falcon. Something like 7,000 pieces uh, but I've showed it on here before, so I figured I would just hop in here and, and show you guys uh, exactly what this was. So yeah, 7,351 separate pieces coming from uh, 671 different components. So that is a thing that I'll be sharing it at some point. I want to get some good uh, images, maybe a render or two. Might do a video or something with it too, but uh, yeah. I just wanted to show that. I know so many people asked if I could do some live modeling on it and I refused. I didn't do it because <laughs> this was modeled at my the speed of my spare time, basically. Um, it was fun, but it was definitely a long-term project and I don't excel at long-term projects. I'm more of a sprinter. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so anyhow, I just wanted to show that because like I said, several people have asked about that and I just wanted to show that real quick so yeah so i'll be i'll be uh i'm sure we'll see i don't know maybe the marketing people throw that up on a sketchup channel at some point but i'll uh, i'll put it on my own social channels as well i don't have a lot of spare time but that's my point i, I work on this for like 30 40 minutes here and there maybe twice a week so it was not a quick model all right so it's it's uh that's a thing all right, so I mentioned before this website. So I found this website, Craftsman Space. Craftsman's, Craftsman, <laughs> Craftsman Space, Craftsman Space. Um, and they have a lot of cool stuff here. I suspect possibly even some SketchUp models in some of these, but uh, uh, this was a cool one because, like I said, I know nothing about spinning wheels. Like my, my honest, I, two things I can think of. One is the Disney movie Sleeping Beauty. Remember when she pokes her finger and falls asleep? That's like 80% of my context for spinning wheels. Um, <laughs> and uh, the other thing, I once at a Maker Fair, I went to a Maker Fair and there was a lady sitting at a teeny like desktop spinning wheel making wool thread. Um, and I watched that, couldn't really figure out how it all worked, what it was all doing. And um, I was with my kids, so we didn't get to sit there for very long. So that's all my context. But it is a really a cool machine. I mean, it's made of all these parts, all these pieces work together. It's got stuff that moves. And the whole thing, almost the whole thing, is made out of wood. So I thought it was pretty cool. And this page specifically actually had a PDF for download that has dimension drawings of all the pieces and then assembly instructions. So I was like, this, yes, this is great. This wasn't something I came up with either. This was actually somebody on live stream asked if we could look into this. So 
they actually posted a link to a very specific uh, spinning wheel from a specific manufacturer, but all I could find of that was, was pictures. So this is a little bit different from the one they were asking for, but uh, some of the same concepts should work, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Anyhow, um, that is most of what <laughs> most of what I wanted to uh, call out before we hopped in and started doing it. Um, so to look at this, um, I got to clarify because you guys are calling this out. The Millennium Falcon, that was a passion project. That was actually not something I did at work. Um, I, I don't get paid, unfortunately, to model fun things unless I'm here with you guys. <laughs> so this is the only time I get to like just sit down and model a thing. Uh, other than that, if I am modeling something, it's a specific thing for like an image for marketing or a file that's going to be used in a training video, something like that. If I want to do something fun like that, that's when I have to uh, put aside weekends and evenings and that sort of thing. So yeah, that was, I just thought I'd share that because I'd shared it before. All right, so enough disclaiming. Let's hop in here. Um, so I do want to look at, this is the PDF. So you guys have seen me. I have imported PDFs before directly into SketchUp. I'm not going to do that today. Uh, one of the things that about SketchUp Windows versus Mac is on Mac, we lean on the natively integrated uh, PDF support, which Windows doesn't have. So um, I'm not going to pull the PDF in. Uh, be, and one of the reasons is I didn't actually have to. So as I roll through this PDF, you can see I have a, uh, well, it looks like it actually could be a SketchUp model right here. I, I don't know, I'm not 100%. Um, but they do have a set, sets of plans in here. So they actually break, so here's, this is the entire spinning wheel all put together. <clears throat> and then what they have here is it's broken into three main parts, which I think they show here. The wheel assembly, this thing which is the flyer, and then the frame. So what they do is they take it one piece at a time, so the wheel assembly, and they actually have a bunch of images, dimensioned images, of that specific piece, which is pretty cool. Um, so what I figured I'd do is we'll start by just going through and doing each of the pieces. So we'll do uh, all these wheel pieces and put the wheel together, do the same for the flyer, and then move on to the frame. And we'll just copy this, and then down at the bottom, once we get all these pieces made, which is quite a bit. I mean, I'm thinking this, this kind of feels like the steam engine. There's a lot of pieces to this. Uh, we get into the assemblage. Ass assemblage. Hmm. All right. I would have used assembly, but maybe that's a, a regional thing or something. So the assemblage instructions. And this will actually show how all of our pieces go together, which I thought would be, that would be kind of cool to follow that and just uh, run through that. So, yeah, so by the time we're all done, we should have a complete spinning wheel, something that looks like this, uh, made with those, uh, looks like millimeter accurate plans. So, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and hop right in. A um, couple, I didn't get to say hi to Nigeria. Who else? Uh, Marconi says his grandmother had a spinning wheel. I think that's really what we see nowadays is it's like, you know, I could see that being something that sits in the corner of somebody's drawing room or something like that. I don't know. I mean, somebody somewhere still uses them because thread and things exist. <clears throat> Anyhow. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's do it. So what I did, sorry, excuse me for one second. <clears throat> <clears throat> what I did was I actually went through this PDF and just did a bunch of screenshots. So I did that beforehand. I try not to pre-prepare too much because I like you guys to see everything I'm doing, but I literally went through here one page at a time, did a screenshot, next page a screenshot, and then I saved all of that to my desktop. So over here I have eight pictures that is the wheel. They're behind my head. That's these ones right here. And then I have another eight that are the flyer. And then over here, I have 21 pictures for the pieces of the base. Some of these are pretty simple. I think the nails have a picture. Um, there's like a metal cap. It's a piece of bent metal. So some of these are going to go real quick. Um, but I don't know if you notice from the details we're going through there too. There's going to be a lot of follow me. So we're going to do a lot of uh, uh, 
fake lathing here on this as we go through too. All right, so let's let's do this thing. I'm gonna hop into SketchUp. I'm gonna close the Falcon. Get into an empty file here. All right, and I'm gonna go to File and Import, and I'm going to go to my desktop and import. I'm gonna start with the wheel. So. Uh, wheel one. I'm going to import this as an image. All right, so this is the first piece. And this is actually a collection of a bunch of pieces. I'm going to import a couple of things. I'm going to go back to import and uh, go to the desktop again. And I'm going to import, uh, I think. Actually, I think I want to import quite a few of these. So I'm going to import this one. So that's the hub. Import uh, this, which is the spindles. And import one more, which is the, these are the, uh, the wheel section. So these, these drawings, these four drawings will give me this main wheel part. Then there's a couple extra drawings that have to do with like the axle that go through, um, that sort of thing. So this is kind of the sub-assemblage documentation whereby we will put together all these other pieces. So maybe we'll start with the hub. Let's start with this piece right here. Um, let's start by scaling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line on here. Just do this line right here. So from here, this will be the full length of my hub. And I'm gonna grab both the picture and the line and I'm going to make it a group. I'm gonna double click to enter that group and I'm gonna scale something. Okay, so here's the whole, the whole length. I don't know what these numbers mean. <laughs> Um, I guess these could be millimeters, 2.6 millimeters, and these are inches? Yeah, that could be something like that. I'm, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this whole thing, I'm gonna back up a step. So based on these dimensions, I'm gonna go off of the big dimension, the big number, not the one in the parentheses. Um, and I'm gonna say that these are, I'm gonna build them, I'm gonna assume they're millimeters but I'm gonna build larger. Some of these details start to get a little small, so I'm gonna build it as meters. I'm gonna to go to uh, um, model info, units, and I'm gonna go decimal uh, meters. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, actually I'll start by, no, just, just do what you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna say scale this line from here to here. And I'm gonna tell it that is 100. Do you wanna scale the actor? And this is why I put the line inside with the image and made that its own group. All these, all these images are gonna be a different size, different scale, so I'm just gonna do this all at once, or just do this once. Ooh, <laughs> that's big. All right, so there we go. All right, so now what I want to do, I'm going to take my 100 meter line, actually I'm going to leave it right there, and I'm going to draw half of this shape and then just use follow me to make a circle around it. Uh, let's see, what do we got for dimensions here? So this is 35. Um, I can come up here, I can say draw a line over 11.5 and then just do a quick arc from that point down to here. And then from there I'll come over 14.5. Oh, 
Oh, that was an arc. Never mind. Line. I'm going to draw this way. 14.5. And then I'm going to come down 20. Uh, oh, here. This is a circle. So I actually don't want to cut that out. That should stay there. Um, what else do we got for dimensions? Oh, so here, the center here is 34. That should be with the middle. And then we come this way, 30.4. That puts me right here. And if I just do a circle like that. A little bit off. So the circle is actually 1.2 up because the center of the circle. Do I have a circle radius? All right, move along, Aaron. We don't have time for that. Um, all right, and then right here, if I come up 65. If I come up half of 65, that's 32.5. All right. And then we come, uh, I thought I put a line there, I didn't. 14.5, and then come over another 54. Come here and let's go circle. And that I did actually get a radius of six. All right, bunch of lines, but I'm gonna get rid of any extra lines here that I don't need and just end up hopefully with a very, oh, still got another line here. Um, don't suppose I have a dimension to that. Nope, oh, here we go, 11 and a half, so. 11.5, and then draw another arc from that point up to, actually I want to line this up. Okay. All right, so that is, whoops, undo, undo. I want to keep that center line so I know where to align the circle to. All right. So that is half of what will extrude or, or follow me to make the hub. Um, I do want to think about how many sides I want to put on here. Uh, it's gonna. This is a six-sided item. And if I look at this down here, you can see if the, there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six pieces that make the wheel itself too. Um, so whatever I do, however many sides I use, I want to make sure that. Uh, it's divisible by six. So if I want a nice smooth arc on here, maybe this is six. So we do six 36 sides. We'll do that. That's going to be our standard for the wheel is going to be 36 sides. So I'm going to come in here, grab a circle like that. Oops. Hold on. I'm going to go circle. Right now the sides is set to 48. I'm going to drop that to 36. And I'm going to go to the end here, pull a little circle out like that. Grab that circle, say follow me, and then, oh, oh, I'm not in the group. Let's hop in there and paste that back in place. All right, try that again. Select the circle, follow me, click this, and there we go. So that, right now, is our hub. I'm not going to punch the holes in it just yet, I don't think. Um, I'm going to make a component. I'm going to call it the wheel dash. No, I'm just going to call it the hub. So I'll put that in a separate component called the wheel. Hub. I'm going, I am going to set my axes right at the spot that I got rid of. So there is one 
piece. Um, like I said, I am going to put this, the, the holes into it, but I'm going to do that a little bit later. Right now, oops. Right now, I'm going to work on getting the wheel made, and then I'll line up the wheel with the hub, and then we'll make the spindle that goes between them, put those in, and then we'll just subtract from solids. All right, so I got a wheel plank right here. Um, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Let's see, where can I find a dimension? Not a lot of dimensions on here. here, make these a group, let's go into said group, and dimension that line that I just drew, and call it 40. All right, now, here, back to here. This is a cool shape, I'm, uh, this is one that I'm I'm excited about because whoops I'm going to just deselect that image there we go I rotate the whole image not just my two lines I'm going to rotate that to 70 degrees and I'm going to put an arc then from this point to this point remember I made my big circle 36 so that means each of these six pieces, I want to put, uh, just to align it, I'm going to make it six segments. So I'm going to go into arc. I'm going to do a six-sided arc from here to here. And then just so it lines up, I'm going to grab that and offset it from here to here. Richards is asking, what about modeling around the origin? That would be a great idea. I could line this up with this right here. Thanks, oh, I mean taking this to the origin. That's smart, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to do something else first. I'm going to save. Yes. You guys were all waiting for it. <laughs> all right. I'm going to call this a spinning wheel. All right. Um, okay, so one of the reasons I think this is cool is because, uh, well, there's a couple reasons. One is it just has shapes in all the different directions. So it has these notches in here, so each piece will fit in with the next. Uh, it has holes that drilled right down in between. It's just a really cool shape. So I don't even know how I'm going to do some of this stuff, That's which is part of the fun. So. Let's start with, so I'm going to take this right now, and you can see this, I have 11 inch, 11, or 11 meter, 11 meter, and then <laughs> whatever the difference is in between. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to push pull this up 11, like that. Um, what is the overall length? The overall length is 35. So I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to draw a, a vertical line, 35. Triple click to grab all of that. I'm going to option. Set that up like that. So that's my two top halves. And now I just have to fill in this middle part. The middle part, I'm going to go back to my x-ray, is at 10 degrees. So I'm going to come right here. Take that, option, rotate it to 10, and I'm going to grab both of those lines and rotate them, option to copy, back to this side. All right, so now I can take this line, I can continue across here all the way through. I'm just trying to break the bottom surface, I'm not really... Uh, too worried about length or anything like that. So I'm just holding down shift to lock onto that line. There we go. 
And I feel like I'm, I'm almost immediately with this falling into the territory of, you know you could do that a different way. And I am aware of that. Yes, there, there is a little, that's, like I say, that's one of the reasons I like SketchUp so much is there are so many different ways to do it. So I'm gonna grab those two lines, those two pieces, I'm gonna option copy them up to right here. And actually, once I do that, I can get rid of these two lines, unbreak that surface. Get a little segment there. All right, and then I can just grab this middle part and pull it straight up. There we go. Nope, that's not right. I got one of those backwards. All right, so I'm gonna take this, option copy that straight up. Got a little extra geometry on these corners too. All right, and with that, I can copy that up there. Not quite yet. Pull this up to here. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to hit Option Copy to copy it up. And I'll bring this up to, nope, I got rid of my line. Sometimes when you're making stuff up as you go, you maybe don't have the cleanest workflow. <laughs> Welcome to Fridays, huh? Let's get rid of some of this extra geometry. All right, there we go. So what should happen right now, and I use that word should, um, is this piece right here, which I'm gonna make a component, I'm gonna call it a wheel section, wheel plank, I'm gonna use, the, <laughs> it says it in big bold letters right here, might as well use that word, right? There we go. And I'm going to, what I need on here. I lost, I lost my uh, inference, but I can get it back. There we go. So that is the origin point. So I should be able to take this right now We'll see if it all lines up. That's gonna be the real test. Option, click to here. X5 or 5X. Nope. That didn't work. Uh, it got, it's close. But I was a little bit off. Like, way off on this last one. So these are just, these look like they need a little bit of uh, finagling or motivation to go into the right spot in real life involves usually a rubber mallet or something, but this is obviously not correct. Um, hmm. Why do you suppose that is? What did I do? I did 70 degrees, right? Oh, that's because 70 degrees. Oh boy. It's because Aaron's not reading the plans. Uh-oh. Slowly, sheepishly crawl back. Okay. So, what I did was I went from here to here with 70 and then back with 60. What did I do? Don't tell me to use math, Marconi. I'll do what I want. <laughs> All right, let's go from here. Let's check. I just want to check and see. Option is this. That's 60.7 degrees. All right. 
I don't know how it happened, but uh, easy enough to fix, right? That's what I'm going to keep telling myself. All right, so I'm going to take a line out like this. I'm going to draw a line back 40. I'm going to grab this, this line and this line. I'm going to copy it once to 10 degrees. I'm going to grab all four of those lines and rotate those 60 degrees. That should be everything. That's everything I need. I'm with you. You know, Mark, I've been telling people that my thoughts are probably more important than math for years and nobody's buying it. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Um, so we're starting over. So this from here, so I'm going to go to, I'm going to, I'm going to make my, my outer ring a little higher definition as well. So I, I do want it to align with the inner circles, but I'm going to do twice as many. So I'm going to do an arc of 12 on the sides on the outside, which should align with my 36 on the inside. What could possibly go wrong? <clears throat> All right. So having said those things, so I'm going to do a 12-sided arc from here to here. No, actually, I'm going to start on the inside. I'm going to start from here to here. And then, can I do this? Here to here. In theory, I'm good to go. All right, so I'm going to take this up 11, and this is going to go up 11, and then all of that is going to go up. Top is at 35. So I'm going to take all of that option. Copy it vertically to right here. This piece, I'll move to here, push that up to there, push this up to here. It definitely felt smoother than last time. No pun intended about doubling the amount of sides on the arcs. All right. Something like that. All right. So let's grab that, make that a component. Uh, call that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name it the same thing, wheel plank, which, of course, is going to say, you already have that, but I'm going to replace it. Let's try this again. So we go from here, option, to here. So far, so good. 5x. Woo! Big win. Let's save. Nice. Okay. I mean, of course that's how it's going to go. Didn't mean to act surprised that everything worked out all right. <laughs> Scoot this over just a bit. Uh, so one of the things I have in here is these this hole for pins. Um, I can see it is along the the middle, and it is uh, what 15 <clears throat> meters in from the edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into one of these. I'm going to go to the middle here. I'm going to go align with this edge right here. And I'm going to say 15. It's going to put me right there. Um, and I'm going to put a circle that is radius of 6. All right. And I'm going to temporarily uh, hide my similar components. I only want to work on one right now. 
I'm going to take this and I'm going to push pull all the way through to the bottom side. I'm going to triple click, intersect face with selection, and get rid of that, and get rid of that, and get rid of that. Nope, I'm going to actually keep this one. Um, I'm going to cut that out. All right. And now I'm going to double click again. Notice I'm looking at the other end now. I'm going to go to turn off, hide similar components. I'm going to edit, paste in place. That's going to take the circle. I just, I just grabbed it and I hit uh, control X rather than delete. Paste in place is going to put that circle right back in the same spot. And it's going to allow me to just push, pull that down. And now I have a hole going all the way through both pieces. Uh, looks like a little bit of smoothing to do. All right. Um, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to come in here. And this is my origin, so that actually means I can get rid of these extra lines because that origin point is all I really need to place this by. No, that's not true. Come into one of these, I'm going to draw a single vertical line. That's going to allow me to line it up with uh, the hub in just a second. Um, I'm going to jump ahead. There, there literally is one of these images, I'll just show you guys. One of these images, assembly drawings, is this, a 35 millimeter uh, wooden pin. So I'm not going to wait or import the image to draw that. I'm just going to come over here. Uh, I'm going to command B or edit, paste in place again. It's going to drop that same circle in there. And I'm going to pull it up to the top here, pull it down to the bottom here. Oops. What's going on there? There we go. And I'm going to grab all that, make that a new component. And I'm going to call it a wheel pin. Sounds like it's right, right? That sounds like thin. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna, I did that as a group first because one of the things I can do now is I can just say hide the rest of my, my model, and then I can just come in here, soften and smooth, and reverse faces. All right, there we go. And the other thing I do is I can grab that pin. <coughs> Pardon me. Go to the middle here. Option. Copy around here. X5. I know I'm jumping ahead. I'm doing assemblage before complete buildage, but but yeah, so that's that. All right. Um, so I'm going to grab these pieces, bring them out of this component, and get rid of that. And I'm going to bring this over here, get him upright. And I'm assuming, I'm, I'm, I know what happens when one assumes. I'm thinking, no, they're not quite the same height. I thought maybe that would be an easy one as far as placement, but they're not. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get this lined up vertically first. Actually, I guess I could just put it. Let's uh, let's move it by the midpoint there. I'm just going to stick it right on this line. And I want to line it up vertically so that I think, I know I'm jumping ahead of assemblage, but uh, I think that this piece, the midpoint, it's going to align with the midpoint of the circle. 
I'll verify this before we cut anything else out of here. So I think that's how it lines up. Um, we can tell for sure by hopping back over here. This circle is in the middle. It's lined up with the center. The circle on here, who really knows? Uh, it looks like it's about centered though. There's unfortunately not a dimension from here back to here. Yeah. We'll say that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Cause I said so. All right, all these circles. Cool. All right, so right now, uh, I want to check something. Solid component, not a solid component. So we're gonna hop into this one. Oh, because of my line here. Now? No. All right, let's check and see why this isn't a solid component. They're straight edges. Oh, probably those little corner lines I drew. All right, what about this? Just to be fair, yep. All right, so solid component, solid component. So what this means is at this point, I can uh, create my spindles, array them around the center again, and then uh, just use subtract to cut the spindles out of there. Um, I am going to, here, come here. Come back to the origin with me, wheel. There we go. I'm just gonna create. Uh, so one of the things Dave was talking about, which was good advice, was to actually uh, build this around the origin. So have it at the middle and that's, that's a great idea. I didn't do it because I had all my, my pictures back here, but that was kind of a dumb reason to not do it. Um, but here we are. So I made a fake origin by drawing a line right through the middle of the spindle, or the middle of the hub. Can't I tell a spindle from a hub? Come on, man. That's on you, Eric. You should have caught that's me on my that bad. one. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna zoom in here. I'm just gonna draw a line. Just like I did before, it's gonna help me to uh, scale the drawing. Take these two, make a group, hop in that group and scale it. I'm not gonna explain that anymore. Well, maybe it will, people keep getting on, so. This is 160, yes. All right, I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna move it to the center. And now I'm gonna draw the other half of this, so it's gonna be eight. This is 20. Ooh, look at these things. Look, look what we got going on here. All right. Um, I'm gonna come here to 60. Just drop a line here for my reference. And I'm guessing that's symmetrical. Yep. Okay. That's what we got so far. Um, okay, so it looks like six and a half, 6.5 to here. And then how far up is this? Oh, from the center. The center of that radius is 11.7. So that gives me a line that I can now go with a circle. I can draw a circle straight down that is I'm confused because this says five, which is way too big. What if that's the diameter that's there? Because that would put it right about 2.5. Feel like I'm missing something here. Oh, this, wait, wait oh, oh, right here, three. I was drawing the wrong radius. That radius is right here for this middle piece. Uh, so we'll go this way, three. That's gonna give me that circle right there. Um, 
I'm going to come over 6.5 this way. I'm going to grab this circle, bring it over to right there. Awesome. And I want to draw this radius, this, this uh, radius of 5, but I don't know where this point is. So, I'm going to do this. I should tell you I have a motivating factor going on right now. I really want to finish this. There's a lot of pieces, so <laughs> if I feel like I'm skipping over details, forgive me. But uh, I've done too many of these where we started into something awesome and I ended up not finishing because because of things. I don't I don't know. I don't even know why. Oh, I, I totally erased the wrong spot. All right. And I'm going to go an arc from here to here. And actually one of the things it has here too is a dimension here. So this is 11.4. So we might be able to even go like this from here to here and actually use that snap point. There we go. And uh, I will flip that to the other side. All right, so there's half the spindle. Um, yeah, thanks for catching that, everybody who caught that dimension except for me. <laughs> it's good to have you guys. Oh. All right, and I'm just going to follow me real quick. Boom, knock that spindle out. Um, let me do this too. that piece. Reverse faces. Toggle. I've been saying spindle this whole time. Doesn't toggle mean like an on-off switch? Is there a woodworker out there who can clear me up on this? Dave, what's what's a toggle? What's that? Is that? Sometimes I mistype. Did somebody try to type spindle and type toggle instead? Is that what happened there? Somebody help me out here. What's a toggle? Should I call this thing a toggle? Oh, I call it spindle. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, the other thing I'm going to do here with this is I'm going to come into it and grab my origin or my axes tool, and I'm going to align it to the center like that. And when I exit out here, it says, do you want to uh, change component axes? I do, because I want to actually place it by that point. Um, I can get rid of this. And I can come over here, and I can go to my components. And grab what I call the spindle. And place it. Right now, I'm just going to place it at the end of this line. Let's do this. Let's drop it vertically. And I'm just going to go to, so I don't have any guides or anything like this, but I know that uh, I could just align this to actually the center of this line would work. And I'm going to rotate it from 90 degrees. I made it like this. I'm just going to spin it up 90 degrees so it's right in the center of this one. Um, the end is all the way at the center. I know that. That wasn't correct. Not a big deal. I'm okay with that. Because what I can do now is I can actually move it along the axes and let's see. Zoom in here. Yeah, like that. And now I'm going to rotate it from here. Option. I'm going to rotate it 60 degrees. 
5x. All right, we got a wheel. I'll leave that there. All right, now, this is a solid. This, this, this should be, hold up. Let's go in here. What's your problem? Strange. All right, this is a solid. This is a solid. This is a solid. So what I can do is I can select this spindle. I can save. I can do it. I just did it. No big deal. Um, David's saying you should call it a spoke, by the way. I like spoke better. Yeah. I, I already called it the spindle, so we're, we're past that. You know what? I think there's a spot in the, the main frame called a spindle. I think that's where I got that name from. Um, so it'll probably cause a conflict later on. I like spoke better. But toggle, come on. I mean... That's rough. Um, all right, so I saved, right? I don't know, save. And I'm gonna go to view, tool palettes, and let's get our solid tools up and running. And with solid tools, I'm going to use, where is it? No, trim. So what should have happened there, yeah, there's a nice looking, nice. All right, grab this one. And, oh, accept. So now I gotta get rid of all these. I gotta get Enerot solid thing. What happened was as soon as I did that, it was great to put a hole in it, but one of the things solid tools does <clears throat> is it replaces existing geometry with new groups. So this is now no longer a solid component, it is a new solid group. So to replace that existing one, what I have to do is, you know, it's actually, I, I kind of jumped the gun there. What I can do is I can come into this one now. So here's my new solid group. If I go to look here, solid group, that's the thing I just created. But over here is my existing component. And you see there's now five of them because the sixth one was replaced by that solid group. It can be a little frustrating. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come into this group I'm going to select all this, all this geometry and copy it. I'm going to go into this one now, select all this. How's the easiest way to do this? Uh, hold on, let me paste this real quick. Temporarily isolate this geometry, grab this geometry, slide it in right here, then select that group, delete it. All right, there we go. Delete that solid group, grab this one. And then make another copy, 60 degrees. All right, so with that, I should now have six of those components again. So I just grabbed the geometry and plunked it back inside the component rather than replacing it, which would have worked also. Um, yeah, it would be really cool if that would just happen automatically. That would be, that'd be awesome. All right, so this is gonna be simple because there's only one piece here. So I can select a spindle and I could say trim, trim it from there. And I can select the next spindle, trim, trim it from there. And I know I could probably group these back together and then uh, do one trim, but I have my pieces separate. This is, this is pretty quick. If there's like two dozen spokes or toggles, then it would be worth grouping them and, and doing this subtraction once, but six, six is pretty simple. Um, all right, so that is the heart of my spinning wheel. I'm gonna grab all these pieces right now. I'm gonna say, Use selection toys to deselect edges because I only want this. And I'm going to make a new component called my wheel. And I'm going to set my axes to alright. I'm not done with my wheel. I actually have a couple more pieces to make. Uh, these pieces in the middle but I'll go drop them, I will cut them and paste them into the wheel. So right now, let's go ahead, I'm gonna import, actually let me, let me hop over here 
We gotta get moving quicker because I'm talking too much. So those are all done. The pin we did without the actual drawing. And so these are the last three pieces. Those three pieces connect together and then create the axle. And so this will this will be quick. Um, actually, I don't even know that. I kind of have a feeling I could just do this without uh, without importing even. I think I can just come over here, draw a rectangle that is six by six. I forgot how big that is. <laughs> um, and then in that, I can put a circle in the center Actually, let me do this first. And then I can put a circle in the center. That circle is going to come down 50. The total length of this rod is 215. Take this up here. Another circle in the center. And these edges are going to drop back down. 65. Uh, 65. that is my wheel axle. Nope. Wheel axle. Um, that goes somewhere. <laughs> Let's let's skip ahead. I might, might do some some light assemblage here. I don't know which way it goes. It's the only thing. Um, it's like the longer end is here. So I think it's, it goes like this. Let's see. Ah, so it's, what's happening there is we got these uh, square corners causing some some friction fitting in the uh, circle in the hub. Excuse me, something like that. Maybe that might be right. It might not. Who knows? Obviously not me. All right, with that, I'm going to get that up right now. All right, two other pieces we had here, which were the uh, the excenter and the rotation pin. Rotation pin, I think I can knock out without importing. Might have to import that excenter. Ex excenter. Um, so rotation pin is pretty simple. I'm gonna go come in here, put a circle in. And I am staying on axes when I draw these circles. It may seem haphazard, but I'm trying to stay near the green or red axes when I draw this. And uh, this is a diameter of five. That's going to come up three. And then another circle right here with a diameter of three. And that's going to go up 19. And we'll make that a rotation pin. Boom. Um, and I'm going to import that Accenture image because uh, because of curves. That's why.
Do we have any straight dimensions I can use? Oh yeah, this is six. I guess that's the line I'll use. Mm -hmm. Because of curves, as I was saying. All right, we'll go grab those two together, make that a group. Once again, hop in the group and dimension that to six. Okay, so now from this center point, I'm going to literally do this just to hold this point and draw a circle with a radius of 12.5, a second circle with a radius of 22.5. Bullseye. Turn my X-ray back on. Um, is this straight across? It is the half. It's a half circle. Okay, that's cool. So then over here, I'll just draw a circle out the edge there. Same thing here, and then a circle three here. Circle of three here, get rid of some extra lines. Cool, that was, that was less, I was expecting it to be a little more painful. I had a moment there where I wasn't quite sure if I had enough information, but geometry is a little easier than I thought it was going to be. All right, at that, we can now bring this up three. Make that a new component called the X center. which is pretty much my favorite part at this point. Let me bring that out of that group. All right, and uh, this, what is this? What's going on here? What do we got down here? Oh, Mark, I apparently rotated Mark. All right, come look at this. I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb right here, but I believe what happens is that the eccenter, I say with authority as though I have known what this thing is all along, goes right here, whilst this rotational pin, or excuse me, rotation pin, drops in like that. All right, so remember I said I made this into a group, or this into a component, this is called the, the wheel, and now I have these pieces that are not part of that group. Um, I'm just gonna grab them right now. I'm gonna hit Command X to cut, go into context, edit, paste in place, and now that is a part of my component. All right, so that's piece number one. So that was less than an hour. That's not too bad. We're, we're doing okay, I think. Of course, the base does consist of two and a half times as many pieces, but let's see if we can uh, assemble this flyer in like half an hour. I know, I've heard that can't be done, but we're just so crazy here, we might just try it. All right, um, see what's, what's going on, what, what did I miss? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of wondering with this assembly, I, I'm wondering if this connects to other pieces and this is a partial assembly for when the rest goes together. Dave's saying the illustration is a little confusing. I agree. Um, but the pieces are there, so we can move them around as we need to. Um, hi, hi, hello, and hi. Uh, the crank 
is it the accenter, the queen's language? I don't know what that means, Mark, but thank you. Anyhow, it's good that, good that you guys are here. Uh, Evan's been modeling the puzzle box from Hellraiser for fun. Mm -hmm. Says it's a lot of math, and I believe that. Oh, I didn't put the grooves in. You're right, I got called out. Uh, Neri's pointed out there's actually supposed to be two grooves in these wheels, and I totally spaced it. Oh, thanks, man. Um, let's do that real quick, because I... Uh, that would, that would be embarrassing. All right, let's get these grooves in here. Um, what I'm going to do, I haven't really, I don't really know what I'm, how I'm going to do this. Oh, I need more though, because I need 12 times 6, right? Because that's how many sides I made. It's 12 times 6. Who's got that, who's got sweet math chops? <laughs> um, oh, no, you know what? Actually, let's keep this simple. Um, I'm going to try to do this without any mathing. I would put some grooves in like this. Colin says 72. Maybe. That's really, no one could ever really tell. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> we'll just never know, Colin. Um, now what I really want. All right. I'm going to hop up here. Right. Oops, I went too far. I went to a different piece. Sorry, I'm trying to think and do stuff at the same time. Doesn't always work. So I'm gonna grab this, put that here, and then put a copy here, and put a copy here, and put a copy here. Because then I think what I wanna do Nope, I can't do that. Okay, I had an idea. It's not gonna happen. Um, I'm going to get rid of half of these, and I'm just going to use follow me to run a groove down this one and this one. I had a cool idea of uh, using scale to like shrink it, similar to how I made the, uh, those of you who saw the video where we made a why is that not breaking the surface? It's like I'm, am I missing a piece? Something's not right here. I'm going to need this to be a continuous line because I'll do a follow me down here with a shape. But if that's not going to connect. All right. Let's view. Let's uh, hide my similar components for just a moment. Draw a circle right here like that. And what I want to do is I want to follow this path, but if this path is broken, it's going to cause an issue. So see if I can, see if I can weld that. No. Right, I'm going to erase that. Let's 
Let's see if I can recopy. I had some breaks in my geometry, I think. Let's see if I can copy that. I know that doesn't go all the way. Oh, it does go all the way down. Well, that so that one worked, but it didn't go far enough because I need it to also go here. I copy that to here. All right, and I'm going to grab all of this, including this right here, and make that into its own group. Um, So now, yeah, what the, what, what? There we go. That time worked. All right. Follow me. That's it. Oops. Okay, so now I don't need any of this. And this mess, oh, I did, no, I don't need that either. All right, all I have to do is now I can take this, move that to here. Uh-oh. Are we still, still good? I lost my chat. Uh -oh. One moment, please. I still got it over here. Uh, oh, that bad crash. Technical issue. All right, we're back. Uh, huh. Because it can't find any. I think I got kicked off the network. Interesting. It is coming through. Hey guys, sorry you're still here. I just can't see you. Uh -oh. Can't see you, can't hear from you. Uh, let me try closing and reopening chat all together. Hmm. Nope. Nope. Still says it can't work. Doesn't work. That's weird, man. It says we're online, but it just doesn't work. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't see us on. Uh, I can still see uh, we're live, but I guess we just can't chat. I'm in a vacuum. Uh, one moment. If there's a point where you got to go uh, freshen up your drink, use the restroom, that sort of thing, now's the time to do it because uh, things just got silly over here. Uh oh, there we go. I got some. I got some. I got. I got. Uh, I got comments from YouTube. Somebody on Facebook, type in a quick message and see how that works. I'm gonna keep keep rolling along here. I'm gonna take these uh, these pieces I just made and subtract them from the main body here. See how this like works out. Yeah, Mark, we can hear you, so that's good. And um, our restream chat just shut off for a second. Is yours back, Eric? Yeah, looks like it. I've got chat. See you on YouTube and Twitch. All right, so it was all on our end. 
<laughs> you guys did a great job. It's not you, it's me. Um, so yeah, that was interesting, that was fun. You never know what you're gonna get. All right, so I'm just going to completely subtract this from here. Oh, no, this is saying this isn't a solid anymore. Where's the surface border issue? Extra lines. All right, so now it should be able to select this. Let's say subtract that from this. There's one groove. This, subtract from this. There's two grooves. So we got our two grooves in there. And if I leave here, there's grooves all the way around. I don't know if those grooves lined up exactly with the other. I don't remember. I guess I could have pulled the image up, but I know there's two grooves. We got two grooves because the band goes around it twice. Whoa, and I'm in some weird angle there. All right. Now, save. Now we really got to crank on the, uh, the next piece. Um, all right. Let's hop down here, and I'm going to go File, and I'm going to Import. From my desktop, uh, the flyer, of course. Um, flyer one. That's an easy one. What else we got? Uh, flyer two. That shouldn't be too bad. Flyer three looks like an axle. All right, let's knock these three pieces out real quick. Uh, same thing I did before. Let's get a line in here. That's going to be thirty nine. In this, this part's a circle with a hole in the middle. And this part is a 2D shape. Oh, this is easy. So here, come right. Well, I'm going to make up the middle. The middle's going to be right here. And this first outside is eight. Pull that down three. A new circle right here that is six and then another circle from that same spot which is four there's four circles the cavity that goes all the way out like that and then this one pulls down 17 and then over here we have from that same I'm gonna use that same center point to draw this out There's the middle of the end. I'm gonna pull this down 39. So put this right there. This goes this way too. And then stuff. <laughs> I'm assuming this, these aren't uh, incredibly important arcs or anything because there's no dimensions on them at all. So uh, let's do this. Let's. It also looks like they lap inside. Oh, they do, look at that. They kind of lap inside there. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna temporarily group this. That way this geometry's not gonna get stuck. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, so from here up to, do I have an even dimension there? Yeah, let's go up six. This looks like it does come straight back for a little bit, anyhow. 
We have an even dimension here, yeah, 4.5. And then I'm going to draw a Bezier curve because this doesn't look like it's a normal curve. It's Abbey normal. All right, I'm gonna take that line, offset it from here down to here. That's my snap points right there. Oh, I deleted my center line, that's why. No, some, oh, it doesn't, oh, the offset didn't quite. All right, um, I'm gonna hide my image temporarily. Right down here. There we go. And then this shape, I'll just grab this shape and mirror it, a copy of it. And this was four, so I'm gonna offset it up to and then down to. And then over here, I'll just do the same. Smooth that, smooth that. Um, so at this point, I'm going to explode this, get rid of this, make this into a component. Wait, first. Flyer bearing, of course. All right, now I'm going to check over solid. I have internal faces I know, so let, let Solid Inspector fix that. All right, so that's gonna go right there. This guy right here, what do we got for a dimension? Here, so 125, that's a good good big dimension. I was trying to find the biggest linear dimension I can to use for my reference line. <coughs> Man, I'm on the edge of a cold or what, but I keep uh, I'm choked up while you guys are hanging out with me. That's what it is. All right, so I'm gonna draw some lines. Go find my middle point. This is symmetrical for the first part. These locations of these uh, pins and hooks are a little different, looks like, <clears throat> one side to the next. But the initial geometry does look like it's the same or similar. I can't tell what's going on here. This is a weird thing. Um, I'm gonna start with, with this though. Uh, this is 10, so this is 59, so I'm gonna come up here, 59. Come up here, another 10. And then, Here's 125, and here is 102. And from those two points, I'm gonna draw Bezier curves again, from here to here. This one will come out like this. This one will come some extra lines now, close up that shape, and then that 
papers. That'll be interesting. So I'm going to pull that up 22. got this thing happening right here. Um, this comes out some arbitrary dimension. Okay, no. From here. Oops, I didn't round off those corners. Uh, this is going to come back 142. There we go. And that can come back like this. And looks like I get to a little, little bit of dealer's choice right here. Um, this comes over six, comes up a little bit, and then it looks like it just kind of All right, I'm gonna do something. I gotta do something about these. I'm having, I'm losing my lines in my drawing. So I'm gonna go in here to lines and temporarily change my lines to a bright red color. There we go. Now I can actually see them on top of that thing that I'm drawing on top of. So why is this not closing up, you suppose? Oh, right here, a little extra line segment. That's all it takes. All right, I'm going to grab this, make that into its own group, and I'm going to move it vertically to the midpoint of this line. All right, and then I'm going to throw a circle on here. Doesn't matter how big I draw the circle, doesn't matter if it's away from the rest of it, all that matters is that it's in line with the point I want to rotate around. So then I can select this and say, follow me, edit the group, and use that geometry. Well, I, can, I can simplify this too. I don't actually need this is going to get uh, intersected with the rest of the geometry, so it's not really that important. Ooh, actually, let's go back in here. Let's get rid of some geometry right here. This is, this is, we got too much. too much again. Speaking of too much, I just want to shave off just this last ring. Maybe. No, I don't. That actually works. That's good. I'm just going to push pull this a little bit so it intersects. Cool. Now I can grab this, make that a group. This is already a group and I can just save and oh, somebody's not solid. Just union the two and have that one big piece. All right. Don't need this circle anymore. Um, so the other thing that's happening here, oh, I didn't, I was gonna come in here and do this. I did not put the little rounded corners on here. Um,
Have I mentioned, I know I've mentioned, how much I enjoy, that's actually not what I wanted to use at all, but I still like it. I've still been playing with Kyrick Mirror so very much. Um, here's where I was, I'm going to use Kirk Mirror to just draw a little flag like that. I'm going to grab this shape and this shape, and I'm going to use Mirror along with Option to make a copy, and then I can actually just knock these off on all four corners. That would have been a lot easier to do, of course, when it was a 2D shape on the ground. But uh, that still works. All right, so last thing I got to do on here is, yes, I have to do this tapering. I got to bring this, this down. So right here, it's currently 22 uh, tall. I need to make it taper in on both sides so that the overall height is only 15. So I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line up 11. That gets me to the center. So that is the middle. From there, what I'm going to want to do is let's see. Let's let's do this. I'm making things up right now, so that's why. Stuff spinning, and I don't, I don't really know what's going on right now. So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to move this straight up uh, half of 15, so 7.5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this green axis so that this back line right here comes up to that point right there. See that? I'll do that again. I'll take this bottom one. I'm going to move it straight down. So on the, on the vertical axis, I'm just going to make a copy. 7.5. And now I can rotate it on the green axis so that this back edge drops to... Well, I can't actually see it, so I'll have to turn it x-ray. This point right here. All right, so see, that's... That's what I'll get, is those two pieces come together. Assuming it all goes as I think it might. <laughs> I'm going to reverse the face here. There's less cleanup later by having the correct face face out. I actually get rid of this one. And I'm going to... I haven't made this into a component yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and explode it. And I'm going to grab that geometry plus this and this. And just say intersect face with selection. And now I can double click and delete that one. Double click and delete that one. And then get rid of these edges. Uh, I could have taken those two slanted pieces and closed them up and made two solids out of them and used solid tools to subtract it, but that seemed to be the most efficient way. Doing it this way seemed a little bit quicker, so. Um, get my reference image back. So the only other thing is those hooks and uh, I'll be honest, I'm going to hold on to this reference <laughs> and maybe go add them back in, but uh, uh, well, whoops, whoo. Um, mm, I'm conflicted. I'm kind of thinking it's going to be a lot easier to put those in now. Um, <laughs> at least a reference. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Nope. 
Hold on, I'm having an argument with myself right now. Okay, just give me a second, guys. All right, I'm gonna draw a one meter circle. And I'm gonna copy it. Because I don't really even I don't actually, it looks like, I don't really, oh, here's where. So I have an XY coordinate table of where these holes go. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just put these circles in 2D. Onto this piece. And then what I'll do is Oh, I really should have made this a component beforehand. Um, sometimes thinking and doing are not uh, hand in hand. But at this point, I'm doing it, and apparently I've committed. I'm being obstinate or something? I don't know if I do that, but apparently I'm... Uh, even though I know a better way, <laughs> I'm not doing the better thing. All right. Leo wants to know what uh, plugins you're using right now. No plugins whatsoever. This is currently just just SketchUp. Oops. I'm just double clicking on each of these to offset the same amount I did last time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab all this geometry and make it a group right now. And I'll put that group in the component and turn it off. Uh, that way I'll have this geometry if I choose to intersect and uh, place these barbs or the, the hooks and stuff later, I can still do that. Um, but right now, I don't want to spend a bunch of time doing that bunch of re repetitive small detail if I can help it. Oops. Vincent is saying, is this for manufacturing? Show us how you would edit the curve or sides after creating the armature. Uh, I would just do it right in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if you wanted to modify the curve, I would suggest going back to 2D. It's hard to modify a curve exactly once you've wandered into 3D space. And then I think uh, Leo was talking about that little menu box you got open in the middle. Oh, there. right. That is solid tools. That's just native functionality of SketchUp. There we go. I'm not sure how I lost that geometry. I lose on the bottom too. I did. What did I do? I did something. At least I'm consistent. That's really the important part is it's not necessarily do everything right, but when you do it wrong, at least do it wrong consistently. Consistently wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, that's not good. All right, so there we go. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it like this for right now, knowing that these are actually, they're hooks and barbs. I, I, it's something to do with the, the, the wheel and the wool and the, the stuff. Um, last piece is there are holes into both sides. Over here, we have a seven meter hole and right here we have a five meter hole so I'm gonna come in here um, lost my circle uh, this is Seven, so 
push that in. And then over here, we have a five meter hole. So 2.5. And this one's gonna be a little different, of course, because, oops. Yeah, let's do this. This is a solid, so I'll just do it this way. I'll just do my circle on the outside. And I'll grab that and slide it in there. And then I'll use that to just subtract Make that a solid. Oh, I didn't close the other end, I bet. Yep, there we go. All right, now I can take this, subtract that. Oh, this isn't a solid either because this is has another group inside of it. So what I do is I can make this a group, bring my cutter, Command X, into the bigger flyer container uh, paste in place, and now I can use that to subtract from, oh, just straight edges all over the place. All right, subtract that from that. There we go. Okay, right. that piece is done. And then one last piece in this batch. Man, who knew a spinning wheel was so time consuming? Got another question. All right. I don't know if you can see the chat over there, but uh, how are you able to reconstruct the geometry but then delete the construction lines and have the intended faces remain? Uh, I'm not deleting any lines if they create a face, I'm just hiding them. So it's possible that uh, what you're seeing is something like, uh, if I was to come in here and break this but wanted to keep the line, you hold on the modifier key, Mac, or I think it's control on Windows, I can delete that. The geometry's still there though if I show my hidden geometry, so it doesn't actually go away. It's just hidden. So I have a shortcut key connected to show hidden. It's the same as if I went to view hidden geometry and toggle that on and off, uh, but that's how I switch between showing the geometry or hiding it. <coughs> All right, the flyer axle is far more complicated than it first appears. It's tricky, I think. Um, I'm gonna need to find another picture of this. So I'm gonna hop back over to my PDF. I think that's this right here. So it's square on the ends, round in the middle. Oh, that'll be fun, that'll be cool. Um, so these, it was things like this that made me go, hey, this, this would be a good one to do. So the bulk of it looks like it's, uh, well, it's threaded right here. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna mess with threading. I know threading's fun, but if you really wanna see threading, just hit Dave up on the forum and he'll show you some of his, his beautiful threading. Uh, I'm gonna start right here with a circle. and then that down to here and then this is slightly smaller I'm just going to put a circle right here that is 2.5 nope Something's off because this is all my dimensions are actually doing half of what I expect them to do. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, uh, if <laughs> see this little break right here? That little break is accounting for half the length of the entire axle. <laughs> so that's why, that's why nothing's working out right now. Um, yeah, because I'm putting in dimensions. I'm like, man, it's showing up half as big as it should. So this 194 should actually be way bigger than it is. So um, I'm going to actually model this over here and not worry about the scale here, but just pull the dimensions. So I'm going to start with a circle this way, and this circle is 3. And I'm going to pull that some length this way, and then put another circle here. This is going to be my faux threads at 2.5. All right, and this is going to get pulled out 39, at which point uh, this is where it goes to a square section. And uh, square section comes down to 4 over 9. Okay, so I'm going to put a rectangle right in the middle here. Is it here? Uh -huh. Oh, it's nine. So actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just 2.5. This is comes out nine. All this out nine real quick. Delete all these pieces. And then this comes to a point that is four wide, so it's currently five wide. So I'm going to select it. Uh, Four meters, not four times. That's one end. The overall length of this thing is 194, so that's that long. I'm going to grab this end and pull it down to here. And now I'm just going to make some shapes here so it's so what I'm going to have is a 4x4 four four square at the end. I'm going to do a rectangle. Do 4, comma, 4. And then that is 19. So at 19 feet, this square barely intersects the edges, so at, at 19 meters back, it needs to be a full six wide. So grab this, scale, I think I do 6m, comma 6m, there we go. I'm going to make that into, a, actually I'm going to reverse all my faces first. I'm going to make it a group, just to make it easier to place. Let's see, whoa, whoa, hit my head on the bar. Okay. <laughs> And then we'll go this way, line it up like that. See that? So I just made a, basically a tapering square, overlap it here, and then what I'll do is I'll explode that. I'll grab that, intersect faces with selection. Delete this outside geometry. I guess I shouldn't have reversed my faces. Actually, that I did that wrong. Um, but there we go. Now we got that round bar tapering down into a square end. So a little different from what we did over here. Down here, we actually had like a square ending on there. This is actually that circle tapering into 
a bar or into a, a, a square, square stock down the end. Cool. All right, and I'm going to right click and say orient faces to get everything facing the right direction. Grab this, make component, flyer axle. I'm going to cut it because I can just delete this and paste that right here. All right, um, I'm going to hop in. I'm doing pre assembly again, pre assemblage. Um, so it looks like this end goes in here, and then this thing. I'm pretty sure this is magic. I still don't understand how this thing functions. Um, I'm not, not really getting a whole lot of answers to any of my wonders yet based on uh, how we're putting this together. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in along the red axes till it hits like that. And then this guy is going to go in here. Ooh, I'm inside. I'm doing some ghost assemblage. Go in here, and then I'm going to raise this vertically so it lines up to the center of this circle. I'll grab it by a weird spot there. Right, and we'll slide it back out a little bit. That's what we got thus far. Kind of cool. I mean, it's definitely a neat uh, practice. The stuff that we're working on is, uh, yeah, it's probably a good time to save. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool exercise in modeling. Um, I, like, I just like modeling from plants like this because it is cool and you don't you get to make stuff you wouldn't think to normally draw. Um, but I don't know how, what all is important and what's not. That's probably in the assembly. Okay, so the fibers go into the orifice of this, I'm assuming, because this is this as a hole all the way through. So that goes into there, then out the sides, and then over the hooks, and onto the bobbin. Yeah, I'll be honest, I got lost with that description. Still don't understand, it's still magic. As of now, still magic. All right, let's import a couple more images. We'll keep this thing rolling. Uh, desktop. We got to this guy right, nope, nope, whoop, nope. Oh, so small. Okay, we did these first three. So we're gonna grab, this is a, a square nut, and then these are the two hooks. So really, we have these two to import, or to, to, to model. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of those. There's the bobbin, the aforementioned bobbin. Somebody just mentioned this thing. All right. Uh, this has a hole all the way down the middle, so my inkling, again, is to do a follow me with this. So let's, let's get it scaled. Make that into a group. Hop in that group. Make sure there's no break lines. Nope, we're good. <laughs> this is a full length. Uh, 129, 129, all right, and now let's here's one end, that's going to go 129, uh, let's see how big is this circle, the circle 7, so I'm going to go this way, 3.4, and then draw that line down to here. Come this way, 17. Come up. Oops, actually, for this dimension is from the middle. It's going to go up 28. 
And I'll draw an arc from there to here. And then from here. Oh, nope. That's the outside dimension, so it's 11, the radius. That's going to come across some amount. Let's run that line long for right now because I don't know the full dimension. This outside dimension right here is 90 all the way across, so I'm going to just draw a line straight up that is 45. And then I can draw this 20 and bring it back down like that. All right. Uh, so right here. Three. And then this has a thing going on here <laughs> where I got uh, a two degree slope. So I'm going to grab this line right here and I'm going to option rotate it two degrees. And then I'm going to option, nope, not from that end grab right here, option copy it to this point, which is, no, to the, to, yes, to here. And now from here I can come over three, draw that one, I'm gonna draw a line long like this, same thing here actually. These are 24 degree rotations, so I'm gonna grab right here, rotate it 24. Grab this one. See my drawing's not quite lining up with the dimensions. That's okay because rather align to dimensions if I had the option. Uh, and then at 10.5, I'm gonna draw a circle. I'm going to draw it perpendicular to that edge till it hits the edge. And that should intersect. Oh, so close. There we go. All right. And I think. This is half, half a bobbin. I think I got all the pieces. I'm looking at the ridges wanting to draw lines there, but of course that's what the uh, follow me will do. All right, so let's draw another circle right here. Grab that circle, follow me with this shape. I'm gonna get rid of that geometry. There we go, and there's that, there's that little bit of a, that 2% angle right there, and then comes up and runs flat. So I'm gonna make that a new component. Bobbin. That's a good looking bobbin right there. Yeah. You know, of all the bobbins I've seen today. All right, and I think this goes onto Oh, so it goes in that way. Oh, yeah. We'll spin around like this. And I'm going to start by aligning it to our axle. And I'm going to do that by grabbing at the top of the circle and line the top of the circle up with the middle of our square end here. And then we'll do the same thing horizontally. Grab it here. And then that goes in there. Something like that. Cool. Hey, it looks like it looks like a I mean, it definitely looks like a real thing kinda. Um, 
All right, so like I said, there's a square nut on here, which I will probably just grab the dimensions off the PDF real quick. Uh, 12 by 12. 12 by 12 by 10. Oh, yeah, there we go. So uh, I'll try to draw it in the orientation I need it. So no, I can't. <laughs> there you go. And then, <laughs> I hope you guys can hear that slapping noise. There's a piece of tape on the ceiling next to the duck that's smacking against the ceiling tile. I <laughs> uh, thought the timer was pressure yesterday. That's nothing compared to that noise. Sorry, what were you saying there, Rick? Oh, I just said that's not distracting at all. No. All right, make that a component. Rectangle nut. All right, which I'm going to take and spin it. Then I'm assuming this is like adjustable since this is threaded. I mean, I really don't understand what's going on at all here, so. Oh, that's what that's gonna be right now. That's gonna be right there. And now we import one more piece. Our last piece is the, this thing. Oh, this is like a straight up machine drawing. Look, look at all these radii and whatnots. Who's it's and what's it's. All right, so I'm gonna draw my line right here. Once again, group them together. Hop in that group and dimension that as being 80. So now what we got here uh, this is pound forty, so that's the twenty thirty two by forty. And this is that apparently where that twelve inch nut goes. So this is six and then it should be ten deep and this is six so this would be three all right now we just got to get some we just got to pour some fanciness over the top I'm gonna turn my x-ray back on look at all the radii okay so I do have some some specific dimensions. So this is 20. That's that right there. This is in the middle here. So I like the spirit of, of saying that uh, this radius is based off a circle from the center of this, but if I don't know where this is, it really doesn't help me a whole lot. I'm just supposed to, oh, because it's tangent to, ah, I got it. Okay, so this is a radius of two. So I'm going to come over here, draw a line up two, draw a line over two, draw a circle like that. Same thing here. Two, circle, here. Okay. So we got that, which is something. And now, uh -huh, this is, wait a minute, what is this dimension pulling from? So from this spot out in space, this is back 10.
I don't know. I'm going to make some stuff up now. All right, so I'm going to come right here and draw a 1.5, oh no, radius of 3. Three, and I'm going to go from here to here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that. There's actually a couple tangent tools uh, that I know of. Okay, so here's here's something. So this is three. So this is twenty-eight point six to here, but I don't have dimension this way. I guess what I could do is I could come over here. And then I could draw that circle with the radius of 5, select it, and bring it back down here till it hits the surface. So maybe it's not useless. I didn't say useless. Did I say useless? I didn't mean useless. Nothing's useless here. Um, go. Um, oops, no, actually I do want to just keep that three so I can put my circle right there. And follow me with that thing. Get rid of that. Grab all of that, soften it real quick. spaces and make that a new component and that is that's the flyer world whirl <laughs> well duh oh okay so this this is something I have to do now that I've uh, finished that I followed me what needs to be a square opening. So I do want to come over here real quick. So that's 12. But I want this to go up. There we go. And then push this. I'm just going to break these like that. Let solid inspector get rid of those broken pieces. Boom. All right. So X to copy, delete, control V to paste. Now let's move that thing. Use X ray. You know, never knew what a flyer was before today, but I gotta say, it's a pretty good looking flyer right there. Mm -hmm. That's something. Right, somebody who knows what it is is probably like, oh, so put wrong, put together wrong. All right, I'm gonna grab all of this, make it a component called, do I already have one called flyer? I do. This is my flyer assemblage. All right, so now that I got my wheel and my flyer, uh, it's time to do some speed woodworking. Uh, we gotta fly through some of this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up my, U, or modify my UI so that I can do as much of this as possible without having to import, because I think a lot of this
is going to require me to import. Never mind. I'll shut up now. That was a dumb thing to say. Yeah, this is uh, some very specific stuff happening right here. <laughs> um, well, we'll see. By the end of the day, maybe we will have a wheel and a flyer and a part of a frame. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, maybe we'll have another uh, we'll have a bonus session in the middle of the week next week and put the rest of the thing together. But um, yeah, I thought I was just going to be able to, well, maybe I can. Hold up. This is mostly a rectangle. All right, let's, let's give it a shot. All right, so first piece is 430 long. And it is 52. Okay, and that whole thing is 30 tall. Ooh. Keep my head out of the way. All right, so that's that. Ooh, this has some angled holes. Oh, this is a, so not the piece of cake I was expecting. Um, speaking of cake, how are you doing, Colin? I don't, I don't want to give you a bloated head or anything, but... Since you haven't been in the office, nobody has brought me cake. Uh, this is 26, so 13. Um, there's another circle right here, which these two are straight down circles, 140 over. And this circle is 18 outer, so it's a nine diameter. Um, there is more stuff going on here, but I'm gonna come, actually I'm gonna do it right now. So, let's see. Draw a line down the center. This So this center lines with the center of that hole. And now I can make, it's 52, so I'll go this way. 26, and it's, nope, oh, 26 please, and it's 9, so I'm going to go up 4.5, and I'll copy that, and copy both of those, alright, and then I can just push that through the other side. Grab all that. Intersect faces. Hold up. I can get everything. Intersect faces with selection. And then I can just delete that. And then delete that. And delete that. All right. So that gives me that slot. I'm assuming something cool happens in here. Um, but it's a square that goes all the way through. Uh, and then these circles. All right, so from the bottom, this first circle, the center is at 55. So now that line, I'm gonna draw it straight up to begin with. And now I'll select it and I'm gonna tip it over 15 degrees. Right, because that's what 90 minus 75 is. Killing it. Dave says, would it be cheating if I send you the pillars? <laughs> uh, well, if they ended up on the form and I accidentally downloaded them, nobody's going to fault me, right? I won't say anything. That's right. Eric's good with it. Yeah. Fire away. All right. So what we need now, so this, this line is the angle of this piece right here. See, see that? So I have the line of the center of the circle. What I need now is a circle 
that is 18 wide that goes along that, and I could just subtract that or intersect that with a face. Um, the issue we're into right now, of course, is to draw a circle. If I draw a circle right here, that circle is not perpendicular to that line. So I've done actually two or three videos on how to do this in different ways. There's, there's several different ways to do it. In this one, the, what I'm going to do is temporarily change the axes. So I'm going to grab my axes tool, click it right here, click my second line, my red line, on that, that line. Now I can come up here and draw an in-plane line. Uh, what was it? So I'm going to draw it nine. I can push-pull that down like that. And now I can right-click on the axes and say reset. And that's going to go back where it was. Now I can take this. I'm going to reverse this face of just this piece, select these three pieces, intersect faces with selection, and now I can delete, 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 and delete. And that gives us our angled thing right there. Um, and I believe, how nice is this, that those are the exact same on both sides. It's symmetrical. So that means what I can do is I can come in here and I can go to the center. I can create one of my little mirroring flags. Grab this geometry. Hit uh, like my mirror tool, Curic Mirror. Option click right here and that'll copy it right over to the other side. And I'm going to have to force it to intersect, so I'm just going to draw an edge right there. Delete that. Same thing down here. Delete that, and there we go. All right, so the thing I was actually most excited... Well, I'm going to leave that because I'm going to copy something else. The thing I was actually the most excited about on this was this detail right here at the end. The way it rounds it off. Super cool. So... What we're going to do is we're actually going to create, like... Uh, a half of a spear, and we're going to shove it on so it overlaps a portion here, and then trim it all off. Um, so I'm going to do that by, so what do we have here? This is saying we want to maintain, okay, so it's going to go right from this point, 1.4 down, so I'm going to do, I'm going to Start with that. I'm going to put my circle right here. Looks like a Dave DM view. Oh. Uh, that he also says, remember these drawings are European and they are using first angle projection, so it's upside down. Oh, I'm so unworldly. <laughs> it's a good thing you're here, Dave. All right. Um, these are going to drop down to 28 from here. All right, I'm at that point. I'll be honest with you guys right now. I got one of those things where I'm like, there's a thing I want to do. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to do it right now. Um, so I'm going to draw some reference lines right now to try to clarify for my brain what I'm trying to do. Because uh, I think... No, I actually want, well, if I just do this, what do I get from this? Um, this is 30, right? So 52, excuse me, not 30. So that's 25, 26. So if I come this way, 26. All right, so if I draw a circle right there, I'm 
I'm gonna see if this works first before I explain what I'm doing, because this may be a catastrophic failure. I like to prep for the worst. And yet, I'm an optimist. All right, so I'm gonna take that, follow me with that. Not a harm sure how to intersect that fin. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do this, I'm gonna go, that's not big enough though, is it? Because it's only coming out to here. Hold on, thinking still. Oh, the pain. Um, slide it all the way in still not it's not perfect though what I'm trying to because this is a lot easier to do if I'm on a square I'm on a piece of square stock but because this is rectangular I'm getting hung up on hitting these things these spots right here um, but actually they don't have to they, they can vanish so it doesn't have to be exact. I can actually just pull this out a little bit bigger. Uh-oh, I think I overlapped some geometry. I better intersect this thing now before I lose it all. Speaking of losing it all, undo. All right. Uh, intersect faces with selection. Now I should be able to go delete that. Delete that. Delete this. Delete this. Delete this. Delete that. Dang it. This, I made a mess because uh, I didn't group that before I started dragging it all over and scaling it. So I got these lines where it all pulled and got messy. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. See if I can clean it up. I don't know what's going on right here or why it's not closing. Let's look at some hidden geometry. Looks like that should close up. Oh, no. All right, there we go. Whew. All right, so the general idea there, what should be happening, I'm still not sure how to align that. Uh, not sure exactly how that should have aligned with the rectangle. Um, Okay, so the square, you can pull it out to the corner. Hmm. Um, so I'm gonna grab this geometry right here. And I'm gonna use, again, Curic mirror, I still have my flag right here, so I can just option click there. Come down here. Let's see if this goes, let's see if this goes as easy as I oh, actually that may. Alright. Alright, 
So now I can get rid of this. Triple click, make this a component. This is base plank one. And I'm gonna run solid inspector to get rid of those little little lines I made all the way around there. They just just that geometry joined together, and then when I scaled it, it pinched and made extra geometry. So got rid of it pretty easy though. Okay. So that's all right. That was okay. That was <laughs> that was like 12 minutes. There's only 21 more pieces in the base. So if uh, I can keep that speed up, let's uh. Yeah, that should be that should be fun. Dave says you should have modeled the dome based on the diagonal. Oh, put that thing going off to the corner that I wanted to meet it at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't hard. Um awesome. Whoops, just close the forum. Uh, can you do me a favor, Dave, and actually post those files right on the forum so I can just grab them? Um, you just drop them right in here. Then I can just download them right from here. That would be awesome. Um, instead of, uh, I don't want to show my, my direct message inbox to everybody. Now there's anything bad in there. It's just, it's, it's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, all right, let's move on with this. Dave's going to take care of the pillars. So we will move on now to base plank two. Um, I wonder if I can reuse some of this. I'm going to copy this over. At the very least, I'll use the end again. And uh, I'm going to make this unique. And I'm going to rename it not base plank one number one, but base plank two. All right. And now we're going to hop into this. And I'm going to do the same thing. We're just going to work off of this reference image rather than. Uh, So this is 55 from the bottom. That's the same dimension. This was 105. Or this says 105. Is that 140? So I need to scoot that over 35 meters. And it says it's 26 wide, so it's bigger. Right, moving along. The speed's going quicker already. Uh, it looks like it has the same. Oh, it's the opposite. So that's 52. This will be fun. So this goes from here to here. That's 52. Cool. So what we'll do is I'm going to do this. I'm just going to put a rectangle right here. Push pull that through. That's going to cut off, cut me off from this piece right here. Just triple click and delete that. Um, I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to grab this and control C. I'm just going to make a copy of it over here. And then I will, you know, Demolition is fun, and it's pretty easy. Uh, it's when you have to actually be careful about what did I what did I do here? I did something. All right. It's when you have to be careful when you're demolishing that. I don't want to say it's less fun, but it's definitely not as much fun. You know, this is like demolition with a ball peen hammer rather than a sledgehammer. It's selective destruction. 
Minimal destruction? I don't, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna soften that. Boom. Now I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna go out on a limb right here. And I'm gonna say, I assume that this slots into that. I feel pretty satisfied right now. I feel like I should quit now. <laughs> All right, let's hop over to. Uh, all right, let me, all right, so we're heading into legs now. This is going to be a crazy one because uh, there's some crazy stuff going on with this thing. But right now, Dave has shared his pillars. Awesome. There we go, look at that. What did you guys do while you were watching me model? <laughs> awesome, thank you, Dave. All right, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead, copy those, and just paste them right in and set them there. Whew. Those are the fastest pieces I did. Hot mouse. All right, um, I'm gonna give you a like for that. Maybe we should do that. Would you guys be interested in that? A community event, we'll do a live model with lots of pieces and people can just go grab pieces and model them and we'll just do a, a, do a big assembly. Maybe we'll do a huge Lego kit that way. That'd be kind of fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one, um, I'm gonna import this. All right, so I'm gonna import the leg. I would just because of the curves and stuff. Uh, it's not quite as easy as this one, so I'm gonna go Import that one, see if I can find it in all of my little itty bitty thumbnails. I think that's this one right here. All right, so I'm gonna, again, get the biggest piece I can find, the biggest dimension right here, and then say that that is, oops, group it first. I should shrink, I was a little, pulled in a little too big. All right, so that look like, yeah, that's about the right size for a leg. All right, uh, I'm gonna start with a follow me extrusion, same as I've done before. But you can see there's lots of modifications. I have an off-center circle here, or a, a hole that goes off-center, and then an angle cut to the end. And we've got this little, uh, slot cut in the end down here. So lots of good stuff, stuff is happening. This right here, do we have dimensions? That's the big question, I suppose. Like this right here. Oh. Uh. These go into, the, are these the holes that this goes into? They seem too small, 18. No, this is, this is nine. Okay, cool. So this is gonna come up nine. Come this way, 39. What other dimensions do we have? Uh, here, okay, so this, if you come this way, 75. All right, next ray. And then come up, 20, half of 27. 
So close. And just put the circles together. Yeah, Lauren says to just eyeball the curves since they're artistic. Ooh, I love it. I got permission to half a I mean <laughs> halfway this thing. Let's say, let's go from this point to this point. Call that boom. Do the same thing here and here to maybe call off the same spot if I can. Awesome. I'm gonna Pretty up those curves a little bit. Awesome. I like it. It's going to work. All right, get rid of these extra lines. Uh, something isn't closed. Let's see. Everything's good. All right. Draw a circle again. One more follow, well, not one last follow me, but another follow me. Reverse my faces. Soft and smooth. And then a couple things I gotta do is so we're gonna take this chunk out of it first. Over nine takes me to the center. I'm just going to draw that all the way top to bottom. I don't need that there. And then the other, so that is one wide. So I'm going to draw a line 0.5 this way, drop it all the way down. And same thing, 0.5 all the way up. And over, get rid of these extra lines up here, get rid of the line in the middle, and then I can push that in to the way back, it does, it goes back 25. That's easy. Now on to less easier things, lesser ease, less Less easy. All right, I can make this a group because I didn't do I didn't do that with the circle, and it, it ended up making things harder than they had to be. Um, so all I'm going to do right now is get a rectangle like that, and I don't know that there's not a specific angle here, so I'm just going to take it. I'm going to rotate this end. We got straight down from above. I have a feeling that, that we can clean that up once we put it in there and uh, make it level with the ground. But for right now, I'm going to reverse bases, explode that group, and intersect these two. That was the easier of the two things. <laughs> 
And this guy right here, I, I, I really don't know what to do. I might come back and drill that hole. So it looks like I rotate that 50 degrees and then, okay, let's try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna make this a group temporarily. So section A, that's this section right here, is at 50 degrees from vertical. So if I take this <laughs> from, I don't have a middle point anymore. <laughs> oh, this doesn't feel like a Friday activity at all. So if I take that and I rotate it That's, that's far less off than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm exactly what I, that's exactly what I was thinking, Dave. I was trying, I was trying to just show off a little bit. Um, but I'm kind of thinking that, yeah, we put the legs in the base and then come back and put the holes in once we have the pieces to go there. So that's what's going to happen. All right. So I'm going to take this without the hole, make it a component, call it leg, cut it, delete, paste. And now what we can do this whole assembly is upside down. Well, that's okay. Um, Anybody remember the angle? It was 75 degrees from flat. So that should mean from here, I go another 15, no, 90 plus 15, so 105, minus 105. Oh, you guys probably aren't going to believe this, but uh, the mathing is not my strong suit. Despite the uh, repeat performance I had in high school algebra, liked it so much, went back for more. Uh, Despite that, I uh, can't say that math is uh, the thing I'm best at. Wonder how far that should go through. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna just make a copy of that real quick. And then we'll get back to doing some more things. actually kind of cool. I'm going to rotate this one 90 degrees and then I'm going to line it up like so. All right, so for right now, oh, <laughs> look at my legs up here. Oh boy. Um, okay, so I might have to Rotate those a little bit so that cool. So all I'm doing to rotate them, I don't actually have a good center point right here. So I'm just drawing a temporary line like that, and then I can inference this face. 
and hold down shift to lock into that face because not nothing's on axes anymore. This is very unintentional, but you don't have a whole lot of on axes uh, geometry here. And bring that around to that? 270. All right, one more. We'll have a, a base of the base at the very least, right? Oh, well, I have Dave, Dave's pillars. Dave's pillars are just going to save us. We're going to just lock this thing in. All right, let's see if this goes to 270 also. It's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we can come in here. Magnifico. Sweet. That's pretty cool. I don't know how far these go in. They may have to slide in more, but, uh, but yeah, but I don't know. All right. Let's see, how long should this take? Boom, done. Um, let's see, where do the pillars go? Done it, done it, done it, did it, done it. Oh, here's the thing. That looks important. There we go. So, the big pillar goes in the middle point, and the small pillar goes... Got it. What are that? Let's see how good Dave is. Did you, did you model these, Dave, so that they're the right dimension apart, so they'll just... Slide right in. Oh, so close. I'm not really giving you a hard time. I really appreciate you doing that. Oops. Oh, no. This <laughs> is upside down. Hold up. All right, I'm going to slide them down here real quick, and then I'm gonna grab this whole assembly. There we go. Pop that down on there. They do stick through a little bit. Sweet, super sweet. Look at that. Whew. You think that's short? Somebody's saying, uh, somebody thinks that uh, plank two, Dave thinks plank two is off. Uh, I'm not gonna argue. Instead, I'm going to go uh, look. Whoops. Has you ever had that happen where you're like, get some resistance from like skin on table and then for whatever reason it slips free? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I need a talcum, talcum powder in my forearms before I <laughs> start modeling for real like this. All right, so I have my whole length here being 290. So let's see what we have currently 241 <laughs> uh, okay all right so that's not right it should go Oops, nope, hold up, back up. Now we'll slide those over while all those are selected. Okay, that's, could be better. I mean, I mean, that is better than it was, I think. I don't really know what I'm making still, so some of that is, uh, you know, who really knows? So the other piece that I'm trying to, oh, there's so many pieces. This piece right here, the tr no way. This is a treadle pedal. I don't buy it. It looks like that's the next piece I need in the 
Uh, see, yeah, the, the uh, oh no, I need this thing across here and the treadle pedal. It's this assembly right here, this thing. Oh, this is gonna actually, so, this uh, piece is actually what's gonna set where my holes go too. First, I need this treadle axle and the treadle pedal. Yep, I will say that as often as I possibly can. So for this one, I just have a tapering pin. So I'm just going to go throw a circle on the ground, make it 4.5. Going to push it up to 80. I'm going to select that top circle. Hit scale, scale uniformly around the center to six, no, three, no, six meters. There we go. Axle pin. Yeah, we're gonna have to import that one. All right, I'm gonna get the treadle pedal and <laughs> the treadle axle built and installed on the base, and that's uh, that's that's my goal for today. That's where, where I'm gonna get to. Um, I thought that was pretty good. I was kind of thinking this was an ambitious attempt, but uh, it was such a cool op opportunity. You know, it was just a cool cool thing to try. So. Uh, let's get the treadle axle in here. Oops. Uh, looks like this is the treadle axle. And which piece was the, oh, it's the next one, 316. And Right after that, I already lost it. Oh. Man, so tiny. That is not it. That's a treadle bar, you liar. Okay, maybe I didn't do a screenshot of this one. I missed the treadle pedal. Yes, I am saying treadle pedal as often as I can because I really enjoy it. I don't know if I didn't screenshot it or if it's in, if it's out of order, but I'm gonna just go ahead and screenshot it again, and then I can just import it. All right, let's get this thing built. First thing again, get my line segment in here. I keep saying I'm not gonna say it anymore, and then I say it. And then two, eighty-three. All right, so this section right he up to here is round and then this part in here is square. So I think what I'll do is just kind of do this as a big bulbous piece, turn the whole thing and then just come back and chop this off where I want it to be square. Um, so I'm gonna start here, go this way, two, what did I say? 83. And then, how big is this hole here? Six. So we're going to go up three. And then, what's our overall? Overall dimension. I'm only going to model, model a quarter of this actually and flip it. So, uh, 
26 is 13. That's our rectangle. Um, here back to here is 86. That's one piece. This is 35. And then 25. So let's, this looks like Nope, just, just throw an arc in there. Stop thinking about things. Uh, how did I do that? I got so out of plane there. those divots in there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Looks good. Um, that's 10.25. Draw an arc from there to here. All right. And then This is a hole, so this actually, I was, I was thinking, for, for whatever reason, I was thinking this was a slot like we had on the other one, uh, but it's not. It is actually a hole. Awesome. So that piece is all we need. Follow me there. Grab all of that. Mirror that onto All right, there we go. And now what we need to do is we need Okay, this is this this the same dimension twenty six. So unhide all. All right, and let's go. Um, still in a group, right? Okay. Go up. Thirteen. So Thirteen is half of twenty six. Go this way, 26, go down, 26, and left, 26, and then I can go back up, 
here. If I take that and extend it, I actually don't have to go the whole way. I only need to extend into this block right here. Um, I can get rid of this, and I can get rid of this, and I can grab this. It is facing the right direction right now. All right. Grab this and explode it. Grab all of that. Uh, intersect face with selection. With that. That's cool. Um, almost there. We have a slot in here that is 10 inches deep. Forty-eight inches at the top. Actually, not enough information here, I don't think, to model this exactly right in the right spot. But we can get it. We can we can put the geometry and shift it once we actually make the pedal and put the pedal in there. That would be the treadle pedal, in case you guys were lost. What that was. So I'm gonna go this way, twenty-four. Come this way, forty-eight. And then draw a line down from both ends like this. And I'm going to take that and rotate it 30 degrees. And rotate this one 30 degrees as well. And I use my, my depth gauge here, my 10 right there, to get that like that. Oh, so nice. All right, um, explode that. Going to hide that. Actually, I think I do have enough information here. It says, uh, that this angles at 30 or at 69 degrees. So if I take so 90 minus 69 is 21 degrees. I believe that's close. <laughs> Gotta go in here. Um, so I'm not, I don't love it, but I think if I draw a line from here to here, and I grab those by the middle of the line and align that to the middle of this line. That puts that centered. I don't know if it's supposed to be centered. It looks like it's supposed to be centered according to this. Uh, somebody's asking why I don't use guides. Um, I don't think it's a bad 
a habit to get into. It's just never a habit I got into. Um, uh, I'm, like many users, self-taught. And uh, as I was teaching myself, I just didn't use guides. So it's not a... I think guides are great. I think they're a nice nice thing to use. The nice thing about guides is they don't break your geometry, which is something that uh, lines do. Every time you draw a line, you're, gonna, you're threatening to break another line or a surface. So uh, guides are kind of nice because they don't do that. I just never really got in the habit of using them. So I never really use them just because it, I never made a habit out of it. If I wanted to break something or find a dimension, I just drew a line over the top of it. So it's just kinda kinda how I learned to use SketchUp. Ooh, this is gonna be a fun one. Okay. Let's drop this down here. Start in here. No symmetry here, baby. Alright, and there's that line. This line comes down fifty-six. Back, all right. I'm trying to go just off the dimensions I have. So I take this twenty one degrees again, and I can grab that line straight across from here, pull it back till it hits, and that puts that line right there. No mathing. That's right. I refuse. Mm, I'm gonna take that over 245. No, I actually wanted to go 218, but that's okay. That can stay there. 218. Take me right here. Just gonna draw a line to reference where I'm at. Um, 25. Draw some circles. All I'm doing is I'm just, whatever the radius is, I'm drawing a line down from the dimension, then drawing a circle back up to the point I can't, just came from, just to give me that, that arc to work off of. There is, uh, there are tools out there, like uh, TIG's tangent tools, and they get awful easy to do this kind of stuff and pull those tangent lines off. Um, I'm being a little more relaxed due to time. It's especially important to get get a hold of tools like that if you're going to do something like uh, machining work because then you end up with a lot more, you know, important. As far as I can tell, this is a foot pedal, and uh, most of the details on here are fairly superficial. But uh, you do have something like you're exporting for a um, CNC or something like that where your, your arcs and tangents have to be right. There are tools to do that. Um, I played with a couple of them, and they're definitely, uh, it's pretty cool. It's cool geometry in, in motion. Uh, where are these at? So from here, this first one is 211. Next one is 17 over from that. Go and there we go. All right, and we go 2.5. 2.5. All right, delete all this extra geometry. So, yeah, I get it. I mean, I could have definitely grabbed the tape measure and pulled guides off there. Uh, I try, you know, I mean, hey, I, I save a lot more than I normally do, so I'm learning still. Uh, 
I do have to just get better at that. I, I need to be uh, a little better at, how thick is this thing? Oh, 10. Using guides, because they, they really are cool tools. I didn't realize for the longest time what a big time saver guides can actually be. Uh, 62 degrees from flat. I'm just going to take this. And this. Rotate them up to 62 degrees. And I think what I'll do is grab this one, make a copy back here to. 116 and then this one I can't start I have to start it past the end so I'm just going to drag a line from here 116 back to here that gives me the point to copy this to I want to reverse. I'm reversing it so the, the geometry that's left over is facing outwards. Now to flip it afterwards. Intersect face with selection. And then I'm just going to right now just put some geometry on there to close it up. And I'll come back to that in just one second. Um, looks pretty good. It does have a little bit of a uh, angle here. You see that that kind of cut back. Um, I'll emulate something like that maybe just by that. Um, that would be easy enough to loft, but it's already 315. <laughs> Ooh, the geometry in the bottom got ugly. All right, let's. This is my treadle pedal. Honestly, can't say why I'm enjoying that so very much, but I sure am. Okay, so if you ever have this happen, uh, here, I'm gonna get it out of the group. I'm gonna copy it or cut it. Get it back out here. So what happened was at some point I moved something and it broke the geometry. I'm guessing this is actually all still planar. So these are all just extra lines. Um, you can go through and delete it like that. The other thing you can do is you can actually use the extension cleanup and just say merge faces and it'll put all that back together. A lot of times if you do something like import certain geometry like STLs where they're, it's a triangulated mesh, so you end up with a lot of triangles. Um, sometimes like a flat surface like this will be broken down into the triangles because of holes. Uh, that's a great spot to use cleanup as well because uh, that's exactly what cleanup does. It gets rid of that extra geometry. All right, I'm gonna throw this in here because I'm excited about this for a reason I still don't fully understand. Rotate that 90 degrees. Oh, so close. Oh, it's not 90 degrees. That's why. All right, let me, let me try it again. Hmm. That's close. It's close, but it's not exact. Well, I'm gonna delete this file and quit.
I wanted it to be so much better than that. But it's still, it's pretty cool. It was close, it was close. Um, this is probably a spot where what I would end up doing is probably modifying the notch. Actually, what, what I would probably do would be this. Um, this makes the most sense to me. Go like this. This is not making sense because everything's out of plane. <laughs> you, you guys get where I'm going. Uh, all right, let's just clean that up. All right, I would do this and then make sure that this geometry is vertically exactly the same and then horizontally, same thing. All right, and then assuming these are both solids, this is not a solid, that assumption was wrong, there we go. Now what I could do is I can actually just use this as a cutter, go grab my solid tools again, trim that one. I'm going to lose my component nest though. So let's see. Whoops. Yeah, so that gives me, ah, yeah, that piece exactly will fit inside there. But like I said, one of the problems is this is fine. You can actually use a cutter and it won't rename it. But because this is the piece that was cut, it's now called solid group. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say make components. I'm gonna call it the treadle axle. Ah, crap, that was wrong. What was that thing called? Um, that was the Oh, I missed. <laughs> uh, I called it a. The original one I called a triadle axle. So, uh, all right. So, so we don't have to worry about that one. So here's a triadle axle. Uh, which is now solid, also. Okay, yeah, probably a good time to save. Absolutely right, Toby. Um, all right. So now I think what happens. Let's go, let's go take a quick peek at the plan. Where'd the plan go? Hmm, that was an odd thing to do. All right, so we hop all the way down here, way, way down, way down. So it looks like those axles, these are pounded into those holes, and then those holes are what make our, uh, actually, treadle bar. Is that what that was? What is this, what is this thing right here? That's an axle pin. That's different from a treadle bar. Whew. That almost got messy right there. Let's go find a quick picture of a treadle bar. Axle pin messing with me. Uh, pin D8. Well, now I don't believe this exists. Oh, there it is. It's a six meter circle, 90 meters long. All right, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm going to Place that using X-ray. 
into here, all the way down to the end. Make a copy of that. And put it right there. All right, I'm gonna grab this whole assembly now and make it into a temporary group. Um, I don't think it goes between those two. It goes somewhere else. Those are too far apart. Ah, yeah. Okay, so if we're looking at like this, this whole thing. turns to some obscure angle. <laughs> All right, so what I could do here to find the angle is maybe go a line like here to here, and then I can go to grab my protractor. 52.3 degrees from horizontal. So start by spinning the whole thing like this. And then 52.3. Not quite. So I'm going to rotate it from the top of the pin, bring it back over. Oh, look at that. It doesn't actually make it all the way through. I guess that makes sense. That's cool. Um, let's just slide it over then, actually. Um, I'm going to draw a line right here so I can slide it in plane. Uh, as soon as you go to uh, slide geometry that you're actually moving, as soon as you move, your reference moves, so you kind of lose it. But uh, by drawing a line over the top, I can actually slide along that line like that. Oh, so close. Why am I working this half a screen? That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at right now. I'm half a screen in. Is it gonna? I'm wondering. Oh no, it's not quite gonna fit. Okay. Anyhow, that doesn't matter. Now I'm just doing stuff. There's that pedal in place. So what I could do at this point, I'm actually not. It's not per perfectly aligned. Um, Trying to think how I would line that up. I'd add, put some reference geometry in based off the center of these guys right here, or the circles at the top. Um, but right now, I mostly feel okay. Just kind of doing that. <laughs> Wonder if this is. All the way inside. Yes. No. Pin's picking, poking out right there. Poinking out. You guys understand what I'm talking about. Peeking. Peeking out. All right. So that's kind of how that all happens. Um, Pretty sure this thing, if I rotate that 90 degrees. Whoa, what's going on there? Goes something like here maybe.
Oh man, I gotta move all of it except for this. Or not. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't go there. I have no idea actually. <laughs> but it seems like it makes a lot of sense. And then this guy probably goes somewhere up, up here or something. I'm not, I'm not looking at the uh, assemblage instructions at this point, so uh, stuff's something like that. I don't know. Looks good to me. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's definitely more of a spinning wheel than uh, a thing that's not. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Take that for your daily dose of, ed, of uh, inspiration. The crank goes on the other side. Dave's actually paying attention to what's going on right now. Okay. See, it's not, it's not quite wide enough to make it all the way with, I've got interference. I'm failing the interference check. But anyhow, yeah, we're, uh, we're stepping towards something. This is the thing, this is the thing we built. It's, it's, it's really something. <laughs> uh. So guys, how much fun as this is, I think I'm, I think we're there for right now. Um, we could goof around for another half an hour, but I uh, can't see any major steps happening going forward. Um, but it's pretty cool. I mean, this is the, I had the same problem when I, I did the steam engine, if you guys remember. It was, it was an awesome model. It was super cool. It was a lot of fun, uh, but it was, I can't remember, 100? plus pieces it was a lot of pieces and I just couldn't get them all done in three hours three and a half hours same thing here a lot of very specific pieces going together weird angles so uh, yeah this is this is a start I may I'm not gonna post it like this I maybe in all the free time now that the Millennium Falcons done I'll uh, <laughs> just whip together the rest of this thing so maybe next week if I uh, if I have some time I'll I'll wrap this up and post it but uh, yeah, I'm not, probably not going to post it. Well, we'll see. If I don't get a chance, I'll put it up. It's better to have something up there than nothing, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Um, turn the flyer 90 degrees. Oh, does that go in here? Oh, no, I bet it goes like this, huh? You know, the funny thing is I'm, I'm speculating on how this all goes together, and I have actual reference imagery not not a, not more than a click away something like something like that is that am i close line up with the holes in the treadle <laughs> treadle is that still this thing down here yeah oh so this is probably this probably connects up to here and as you step it does the thing where you yeah yeah this Madwani on YouTube is reminding me that this is, this kind of feels like putting together a uh, something from Ikea, and I got this little guy over here. <laughs> just just push that behind the couch and pretend you didn't have that piece. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is definitely cool. Thank you for, I don't remember who had the original idea. It was, it was on a live stream and somebody suggested this. Uh, like I said, they actually suggested a very specific uh, piece from another, from a specific manufacturer, which I was not able to get good information on. Um, but yeah, good idea. This was this was great. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll post this with a WIP on the end and a link to those instructions and I'll put it up. Well, I'll just, I'll, I'll save this and I'll throw it up on the forum. That's what I'll do. This will go to the forum. The final, I won't put onto uh, 3D Warehouse until it's actually done. So that's the way it'll work. So if, cause I know somebody out there is waiting to say something about using MS physics to make it actually move and you can go for it. That's, that's all you guys. <laughs> Turn the flyer another 180 degrees. Oh man. 
So does it go on the other side of this vertical part? Is this, does this go over here? Oh yeah, that seems to make more sense. No, that's in the middle of a thing now. All right, I'll look at the image. Hold on, I'm arguing with myself. So close, I right, just go to the very top. Oh. So yeah, so this. Yeah, see that's that's pretty cool. That's oh no, it's on the wrong side. I gotcha. Rotate 180 degrees. That goes something like that. That goes higher up and over a bit. There we go. We're getting there, guys. Something like that. So this, there's another bar that goes across here that that connects up to. That's pretty cool. You know, and as I was looking at this, I didn't look through the final uh, assemblage instructions, but see this stick right here? I'm pretty sure that's just a walking stick that's leaning against the spinning wheel because I couldn't find a way to actually connect that. <laughs> I couldn't actually, it just kind of seems to be leaning out here, but it's a cool looking thing and that'll be a, that would be a fun follow me too, but so, that's what I'll do. I will, uh, I will take this, put it on the forum, so anybody who wants to play with what has been created so far is more than welcome to try to take this across the finish line. If I get a chance, I'll try to uh, wrap it up and post it on Warehouse. And of course, if I do that, I will try to remember to put a link into the forum as well. Special thanks this week to Dave Richards, who modeled these two pieces. If, uh, let me show you what it would look like if Dave wasn't here. Less impressive. Ah, good Dave. So thank you very much, Dave. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> appreciate you watching out for us. Um, Neri said uh, they were the one who originally asked for it. Um, I, I'm, I hope you like the model. Hopefully this gives you enough information to tackle the specific model you were looking at. And that thing was distaff. So yeah. So sometimes I take disc staff and I lean disc staff against disc spinning wheel. Is that how it works? Anyhow, yeah, I think uh, we're there. So thank you guys so much for, for coming and hanging out. Um, I know some of you were here yesterday and today, so that's, that's a whole lot of SketchUp Live. You guys are awesome. Appreciate that a lot. And we had, uh, we actually had some, uh, quite a few people watching today. That was pretty cool. And sorry for that. We had that little hiccup in the middle where all of our, all, all of you went away. I was, I felt like I was alone. So, uh, thank you very much. Um, if you guys have ideas for things you think would make cool models, uh, fun models, go ahead, post those. Something with maybe say 15 fewer parts than what we just did right now. That would be cool. We're also looking for a topic for an organic model. We try to, I try to do organic modeling every, every I don't know, six, six or so times. Um, trying to think of what would make a cool organic model. If you guys can think of some cool, nice swooping shapes, some subdivision or artisan kind of stuff, uh, leave comments down below on what you think would be cool. Otherwise, thank you very much. You guys have an awesome weekend. Uh, have a great week next week. We will be right back here on Friday, modeling something. Watch for social media. That's, that's how I find out what I'm modeling too. I go look on Facebook and figure out what I gotta figure out for Fridays. Um, we'll be modeling something else. I just don't remember what it is off the top of my head. So uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. I'll leave the chat live. So if you guys do have an idea of what would make a cool model, go ahead and leave it there. Otherwise, you can hit us up on, on social media. Uh, you can head into the forum. You can comment on YouTube video. We appreciate ideas any way they come in. So thank you guys very much. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you to Eric. Eric, thank you for, for uh, watching the comments for us that there. Oh, and all those Eric. links, all those yeah. times it said SketchUp, that was actually Eric. So uh, thank you guys. Have an awesome weekend. We will see you next week.